Hi, uh, this is uh, my second lecture on multi-core linearity and uh, in the previous lecture, we have uh, learned uh, uh, what is multi-core linearity. Uh, the problem of multi-collinearity uh, arises when uh, two or uh, more than two regressors variable are linearly uh, dependent. Uh, today, basically, you know, we are uh, uh, in the last class also we talked about you know the presence of uh, multi-collinearity has a severe effect uh, on uh, least square estimates of regression coefficients. Uh, today, uh, again, you know, uh, we will talk about the effects of uh, multicollinearity or the problems uh, due to multicollinearity, and also we will learn uh, how to uh, detect uh, the presence of multicollinearity in the data. Okay, so, uh, let me first talk about you know, some more problems uh, due to uh, multicollinearity. Okay, in the last class, uh, uh, we uh, we we proved uh, or uh, we illustrated the fact that you know the uh, the strong multicollinearity uh, results in um, large uh, variance and covariance of the regression coefficients. Okay, so we illustrated this issue uh, using uh, you know in the case of multiple linear regression. Uh, Use, uh, when there are two regressors in the multiple linear regression model and also in general we have proved uh, this fact uh, that the strong multicollinearity result results in uh, large variance and uh, covariance of uh, regression coefficients. And today, uh, we will be talking about some more uh, problems uh, due to multicollinearity. Uh, the second one is uh, Multicollinearity tends to produce uh, least square estimate beta hat that are too far from the true parameter. Beta. Okay, so, here uh, we compute the square distance between the least square estimate of the regression coefficient beta i hat minus beta i. So, this is the estimate of the ith regressor coefficient and this is the true value of the ith regression coefficient and the square distance is this one and uh, sum over uh, i is from 1 to k minus 1. right? And uh, we denote this by L square. Okay, next, what we do is this is the square distance uh, from beta hat to the true parameter value uh, beta. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we compute the expected value of this square distance. So, expected square distance.
we denote the uh, we denote it you know this is basically expectation of l square which is equal to expectation of beta i hat minus beta i square sum over all i right well uh, what we know is that you know uh, this this beta i hat is the least square estimate of beta i and uh, we know that the least square estimates are unbiased estimated uh, unbiased estimated here so we know that uh, expected value of beta i hat is equal to beta i so this one is uh, nothing but expected value of beta i hat minus expectation of beta i hat right and this one is nothing but the variance of beta i hat variance of beta i hat okay now uh, the variance of beta i hat in uh, in multiple linear regression model is equal to summation sigma square x prime x inverse the j uh, sorry i i th element okay and this one is equal to sigma square by the i i th element uh, which we proved uh, before also it is 1 minus r i square okay sum over i so this one is basically a sigma square sum 1 by 1 minus r i square okay so this r i square uh, is the coefficient of multiple determination where r i square is the coefficient of multiple determination for for the regression of x i on the remaining k minus 2 regressors. Okay. And uh, also uh, we okay so what we proved is that uh, expected value of this square distance e l square is equal to sigma square sum 1 by 1 minus r i square sum over i and uh, when there is multi collinearity one minus one one by one minus r i square will be large for at least one i okay 
Uh, well, so uh, this R i square is the uh, is the coefficient of multiple determination uh, for the regression of uh, for the regression of x i on the on the remaining uh, k minus two regressors. Now uh, you know multicollinearity means uh, the, you know the problem of multicollinearity arises when uh, two or more regressors are linearly dependent. Now, if say for example, if the ith regressor x i is uh, linearly dependent on the remaining regressors, then r i square uh, the coefficient of multiple determination associated with uh, uh, x i is close to unity that means you know r i square will be will tend to 1 when r i square will tend to 1 uh, then uh, 1 minus sorry 1 by 1 minus r i square uh, will tend to infinity and then the expected value uh, will be uh, i mean that, that's why it says that when there is multi collinearity uh, this term uh, will be large for at least one i. So, it depends on uh, you know if, if x i is uh, linearly dependent on the on the remaining regressors then uh, then this term will be large that, uh, and uh, this term is large means r i is close to uh, I mean when uh, well 1 minus 1 sorry 1 by 1 minus r i square will tend to infinity as r i square tends to 1. Okay. Well, so next uh, we will talk about uh, some more um, problems due to multicollinearity that is the, the model coefficient. with negative sign when positive sign is expected. Uh, well, so that it says that you know you may get uh, uh, negative sign for some regression coefficients when you expect you know you are really expecting that positive sign for that uh, uh, regression coefficients. So, this might be the effect of uh, multicollinearity. And the next issue is say 4, it says that high significance in a global EPS test but but in which none of the regressor are significant in partial F test. Okay, so, uh, uh, I, I like to illustrate this point also, it says that you no know, high significance in the in the global uh, F test, but uh, none of the regressors uh, are significant in partial F test. So, for this one I uh, want to recall uh, one example uh, from multiple linear regression model. 
okay i mean there is there is only one example in uh, i mean i talked about in in module 2 that means in the multiple linear regression model uh, i'm going to recall that uh, example so here is the data i mean or here is the example we considered in in module 2 a multiple linear regression model well, so here uh, we have two regressors and uh, one response variable and we have the data for that. Uh, well, we know how to fit uh, a multiple linear regression model here. The fitted model, if you can recall, the fitted model is y hat equal to 14 minus 2 x 1 minus x 2 by 2. Uh, now, once we have the fitted model, what we do is that we, uh, we check the uh, significance of the fitted model by uh, using the global test. That means, uh, we test the hypothesis uh, that uh, beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0 uh, against the alternative hypothesis that uh, you know h naught is uh, not true. So, the significance of the null hypothesis that beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0, it says that you know there is no uh, linear relationship between the response variable and the uh, regressor variables. And uh, we test this hypothesis uh, using the global f value that is uh, obtained uh, from the ANOVA table. So, here is uh, my ANOVA table for this data. Okay. You just refer uh, my uh, classes in, in module 2. Uh, well, so we have perhaps 11 data. And this that is why the total degree of freedom is 10 and uh, the f value is uh, 7.17 and this follows this f follows uh, f distribution with degree of freedom 2 and 8 right and uh, since the observed f value is is larger th i mean greater than the tabulated f value, we reject uh, the null hypothesis beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0 and that means we, we accept, we accept the alternative hypothesis that is beta 1, okay, beta i is not equal to 0 for at least 1 i. Okay, so, the ultimate conclusion from this test is that you know uh, the fitted model is significant. So, the global test says you reject the null hypothesis where the null hypothesis is you know it, it is it says that there is no linear relationship between the response variable and the a regressor variable. So, we are rejecting that null hypothesis that means, we are accepting the, accepting the fact that uh, there is a linear relationship between uh, the response variable and uh, the uh, regressor variables. Now, we go for the partial F test. Uh, uh, so, Here is my partial F test. Uh, the first it says that uh, you know what does x2 contributes given that x1 is already in the regression. Okay. So, the contribution of x2 in the presence of x1 is uh, uh, you know whether the contribution is significant that can be tested uh, by testing the hypothesis that beta 2 equal to 0 against uh, beta 2 is not equal to 0. So, this one basically uh, it 
test the significance of x2 in the presence of x1 in the regression model. And uh, you know either you can go for the partial F test or you can go for the T test uh, to test this hypothesis. Uh, well, so here I, I, I took the T statistic approach, uh, here the T value is this one. Now the tabulated T value is 2.306. Right, and uh, the observed value is not greater than the tabulated value. So, that means we accept the null hypothesis that beta 2 is equal to 0. Okay. So, accepting this null hypothesis means uh, accepting the null hypothesis beta 2 equal to 0 uh, means that uh, the regressor, second regressor x2 is not significant in the presence of x1. Now, what we do next what we will do is that we will test the significance of uh, x1 now in the presence of x2. Well, the ne next one is what does x1 contributes given that x1 is already in the regression. That means, the significance of x1 in the presence of x2 in the model. Uh, this can be tested by testing the hypothesis that you know h not equal h not beta 1 equal to 0 against beta 1 not equal to 0. Here is the test statistic value, here is the tabulated value. Again you see again you see that the tabulated sorry the observed value is is not greater than the tabulated value that's why we accept the null hypothesis beta 1 equal to 0 okay so that means uh, none of the partial f tests are significant uh, partial test or the t test none of the partial tests are significant so what we observed here is that see uh, the global F test is significant. The global F test says that the there is a linear relationship between the response variable and the regressor variable, but when we go for the partial test then none of the regressors are significant. Neither x2 is significant in the presence of x1 nor x1 is significant in the presence of x2. So, this is one example basically uh, if the global F test is significant then at least uh, there should be one regressor which is significant, but here uh, we are getting the result you know the global F test is significant, but none of the partial tests are significant. That means, this is this might this might be the effect of um, multi collinearity. So, we can check uh, you know whether uh, multi collinearity exists in the uh, given data. That means, uh, whether x1 and x2 are linearly dependent that you can check. So, this is one example of uh, the effect of multi collinearity in the data, right. So, next uh, we move to another effect of multi collinearity that is uh, that says that you know uh, different model selection procedures yield different models. Okay. Okay, so, uh, model selection means you know about uh, the model selection we talked about uh, selecting the best, best model uh, in module 3 perhaps. Well, um, we know how to select the best model using um, 
using the all possible selection and also the stepwise selection. Okay. Uh, well, so what it says that if if you have uh, if there is the presence of multicollinearity in the data, then different mod model selection technique will produce different model. Okay, so this is uh, if you you know of course you know different model can different model selection uh, procedure can uh, can uh, uh, yield different models but uh, but uh, if if there is a there is a, there is a, there is a, uh, pr uh, there is a multi collinearity present in the data then uh, and the, then the different i mean with high probability that you know the different uh, model selection procedure will yield uh, different uh, models okay so these are the uh, um, you know the uh, different uh, uh, problem uh, that can occur uh, due to uh, multicollinearity we talked about. Next, uh, we will be talking about the, uh, uh, I mean we will talk, uh, we'll talk about uh, the different techniques to detect uh, the multicollinearity. Okay. Okay. The first technique is uh, examination of correlation matrix X by X. So, it says that uh, simple measure of multicollinearity is inspe inspection of of diagonal elements that is R i j in x prime x. Okay, so, uh, we know what is uh, correlation matrix uh, given the original data, if you uh, scale and center them, uh, then uh, the transform data or the modified data, uh, the x prime x for the modified um, for the modified data is called uh, uh, correlation matrix. Okay. Now, the off diagonal elements of the correlation matrix is uh, are Rij's, where Rij is the uh, sample, I mean, is the correlation coefficient between uh, the regressor Xi and Xj. Okay. Now, you know, if uh, regressor Xi and uh, Xj, if they are dependent, then the Rij will be near to unity. So, uh, that means, uh, if the regressor x i and x j, the correlation coefficient uh, for the regress, uh, regressor x i and x j uh, value is high, that indicates the, the presence of multicollinearity. So, as a general rule, 
we say that you know if r i j r i j is the correlation coefficient between the regressor x i and x j if this one is greater than 0 0.9 then it indicates r i j greater than 0 0.9 indicates multicollinearity problem. Now, examining the correlation matrix x prime x is helpful in detecting linear dependence between pairs of regressors. Okay. But the same is not you know uh, let me complete uh, you know uh, but examining the correlation matrix x prime x is not helpful in detecting multicollinearity problem arising from linear dependence between more than two regresses. Okay, so, let me explain uh, what I wrote here. It says that the examining the correlation matrix is helpful in detecting linear dependence between pair of regressors, but the same is not helpful in detecting multicollinearity problem arising from linear dependence between more than two regressors. Well, so what it says basically you know uh, if the, the problem of multicollinearity is due to the linear dependence between two regressors, then the correlation matrix can detect that. Okay. If, if the multicollinearity problem is due to the linear dependence between two regressors, but it might be the case say we are, talk, we are in the multiple linear regression setup. So, there are k minus 1 regressors and k minus 1 could be uh, could be greater than 2 okay but it might might be the case that you know the 
the problem the problem of multi collinearity is due to the linear dependence between more than two regressors in that case uh, this correlation matrix can't detect that can't detect the presence of multi collinearity in that case well so let me like give uh, one example to to illustrate uh, this fact uh, i'll be taking this uh, data uh, it says that you know unstandardized uh, regressor response variables from webster gunt and mason well so uh, i'll refer this data as uh, webster data here we have uh, six regressors response variable and to check you know uh, what i want to say here is that uh, later on we will see that you know this data i mean uh, this data has the problem of multi collinearity but uh, the correlation matrix can't detect it okay because because the multi collinearity problem in this webster data is not due to the linear dependence between two regressors here we have a linear dependence between the regressors involving more than two regressors okay so what we do is that first uh, we'll compute you no know, uh, first we'll compute the correlation matrix for this data and uh, here is the correlation matrix here is the correlation matrix for the uh, webster data you see the op diagonal elements here none of them are suspiciously large okay here you know this is perhaps the highest uh, uh, correlation value so here we say you know that we say that r i j so this is r 1 2 this is r 1 3 we say that you know r i j if r i j is greater than 0 0.9 that indicates uh, this indicates indicates multi collinearity problem okay but here none of the pairwise correlations are suspiciously large and uh, we have no indication of of near linear dependence okay so uh, so here you know the inspection of rij is is not sufficient to detect the multi collinearity so the ultimate uh, conclusion is that you know uh, the examining the correlation matrix is is not sufficient to detect the multi collinearity problem if the multi collinearity if the multi collinearity problem involves linear dependence between more than two regressors well so uh, next uh, we'll be talking about one more uh, techniques to to detect the multi collinearity okay so uh, th so the, the examining the correlation matrix is uh, not sufficient always okay 
So, next we talk about uh, Eigen system. analysis of x prime x. Okay. So, it says that multicollinearity can also be detected from the Eigen values of the correlation matrix x prime x. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I hope you know what is uh, Eigen value and Eigen vector associated Eigen vectors. So, for a k minus 1 regressor model, this one is uh, k minus 1 cross k minus 1 matrix. there will be k minus 1 Eigen values, say lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k minus 1. Okay. So, now you know if there are one or more linear dependence in the data. then one or more Eigen values will be small. Okay. Uh, well, uh, so uh, basically you know if uh, you have a small Eigen values that implies uh, small Eigen values implies that uh, there is a linear dependence between the columns of x. Okay. Now, uh, we define the condition number define the condition number of x prime x as k which is equal to lambda max by lambda minimum. So, lambda max is the maximum Eigen value and lambda minimum is the minimum Eigen value. Now, uh, uh, you know that a, a small Eigen value um, indicates linear, uh, I mean uh, one or more uh, uh, small Eigen values indicates one or more linear dependence, uh, uh, dependences in uh, among the regressor variable. Okay? Or, uh, linear dependences uh, among the columns of x. Now, uh, look at the condition number here. Uh, if lambda minimum is small 
or very close to 0, then this condition number is going to be large. And since lambda minimum if if lambda minimum is small then you know there is uh, linear dependences in the data okay so from there uh, we can conclude that when lambda minimum is small k is going to be large so the large value of k indicates the presence of multicollinearity in the data right so we'll give a general rule oh, so what is k k is lambda max by lambda min as a general rule k less than 100 indicates no serious problem with multicollinearity. Now, k in between 100 to 1000 indicates moderate to strong multicollinearity. And k greater than 1000 indicates a severe problem, problem with multicollinearity. Okay. So, uh, large value of k indicates the severe, severe problem with multicollinearity because of the fact that you know k will be large when lambda minimum is very small or close to 0. Well, and since lambda minimum is 0 indicates uh, there is linear dependence uh, among the columns of x. Okay? That means, uh, uh, the presence of multicollinearity. Okay? So, this is uh, the condition number. Now, we define the condition indices. the condition indices of the x prime x matrix are k j which is equal to lambda max by lambda j. Okay, for j equal to 1 to k minus 1. And of course, you know uh, clearly the largest condition index is the condition number. So, this will be large when lambda j is minimum and that is nothing but uh, the condition number. Okay. Now, this Eigen system analysis it is not only you know it it not only detect the, the multicollinearity uh, problem also it can measure the number of linear dependence uh, dependences in the 
in the data. Okay. So, that can be I mean uh, the number of kj or condition indices greater than 1000 uh, is a measure of the number of linear dependencies uh, in the data. Okay. So, the number of of k j greater than 1000, because if see if k j is greater than 1000, then uh, uh, that indicates severe problem with multicollinearity. Now, number of k j greater than 1000 is a useful measure of the number of near linear dependencies. in x prime x. Okay. Uh, if we consider the uh, Webster data, the eigenvalues for Webster data are. So, there we had you know 6 regressors. So, uh, 6 eigenvalues lambda 1 equal to 2.4288, lambda 2 equal to 1.5462, lambda 3 equal to 0 0.9221, lambda 4 equal to 0 0.794, lambda 5 equal to 0 0.3079, lambda 6 equal to 0 0.0011. So, this eigenvalue the smallest eigenvalue is very close to uh, 0. Uh, so, this one is basically you know just the there is we say that there is there is only one small eigenvalues. Okay. Small eigenvalues means you know very close to 0 and, uh, and the condition number here also you know small eigenvalues indicates uh, linear dependence in the data one linear. So, since there is only one small eigenvalue we can say that there is there might be um, uh, only one linear dependence dependency in the in the data, but uh, of course, we have to check with the condition indices also. Uh, let me first compute the condi condition number. Uh, the condition number is the condition number is k, which is lambda max, lambda max is lambda 1 here 2.4288 point zero zero one one which is equal to two one eight eight point one one and this is larger than one thousand right so so this indicates which indicates severe multi uh, severe problem with 
with multipole image. Okay, so uh, uh, what I want to uh, say here today regarding the detection of multicollinearity problem is that you know first uh, we consider this web start data and uh, examining the correlation matrix could not detect the problem of multicollinearity in the web start data, Wh whereas you know this Eigen system analysis technique says that since the condition number is uh, 2188 uh, which is much larger than uh, 1000 uh, so it says that the uh, there is a severe problem with multicollinearity in the uh, web start data okay so not only uh, this one in the next class we will be talking uh, more about you know we'll compute the condition indices and from there we'll see how many linear dependencies uh, are there okay so that's all for today thank you for your attention